So one of my favorite mods to show off to date has definitely been the RGB LED mod. It's been a lot of fun to integrate RGB LEDs into a variety of different consoles, whether it be GameCubes, Sega Saturns, N64s, or heck, even controllers. But in case it's not obvious enough, one question always seems to arise whenever you do an RGB LED mod, and that is, how do you do one? So in this video, let's take a look at how to do an RGB LED mod. So one thing to kind of note as we get started here, you can do this on virtually any console. The key is going to be a 5 volt line and ground. Those are going to be the keys to getting the RGB LED mod to work. For purposes of this video, I'm going to do it on a GameCube, but the reality is you can do it on anything you want, like I had previously mentioned. So let's rip this console open and get ourselves to the controller board. Okay, now that we have access to the controller board all by itself, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and expose the, the tabs that sit above the uh, controller ports. And the purpose of this is to expose those so we can go ahead and allow light to shine through them. So I'm going to use a very thin screwdriver over here and I'm going to go ahead and push those up from the inside of the controller port. And then what I'm going to do is take a pair of flush cuts and cut those off. All right, and with the daughter board for the controller ports all pretty much set aside, I'm gonna go ahead and grab my LED controller. I'm gonna be using individually addressable LEDs as I just find them a lot more elegant to use overall, as opposed to something like an RGB LED strip. Now I've shown both in my videos historically, but I'm gonna go ahead and use this because like I said, I'm a big fan of the individually addressable RGB LEDs. The specific uh, RGB LED controller that we're using is the SP110E. I'll have a link to that in the description that you can go ahead and pick it up from Amazon, but as you're kind of seeing here, let's rip this bad boy open. Now while ripping this thing open, you'll notice that I accidentally ripped off the power plug. At the end of the day, it's no big deal. We're going to end up soldering directly into the power and ground on the board, and we do not need a plug here. So one thing that they did that's really nice is they printed the polarity of the power jack, and we know based on this that it's center tip positive. This will help us know where to wire a positive and ground on the board itself. So with this in mind, let's solder the red wire to five volts and the orange or brown wire to ground. The trick is to make some nice solder joints on both the wires and on our solder pads. The trick to doing so is to making sure you're using plenty of flux and to make sure you have a nice well wetted joint by using that flux and pre tinning both the areas. With the LED controller all done, next we're going to move our attention over to the actual LEDs themselves. These are the NeoPixel style LEDs, individually addressable of course. I've got a link uh, to Amazon and where I purchased these from. They're really cheap, you can get a hundred of them for 15 bucks and I really like these because you can determine the exact length that you want your conductor to be in between them and it's really easy to drive them with only three wires. So let's use some flux and let's get these all prepped and ready to go so we can add some wire. LEDs are all prepped. Time for the old adage of measure twice, cut once, as we trim all the wire we're going to need to length, as well as tin them so they easily can be soldered to our LEDs. As you're going through this, just remember to use flux and good soldering technique so you get solid solder joints on all your LEDs. The GameCube requires five of these in total, four for the controller ports and one for the power LED, so let's go ahead and montage through all this really quick and get all these LEDs wired up and ready to be installed into the actual controller port. The one thing you want to take note of as you're going through this is there's a directional arrow on the LEDs and that is the direction that the power and data as well as ground need to go from LED to LED. I realize it's hard to see here in the video but take my word for it, it's there and if you're doing this mod yourself, take note of it.
right, with everything ready to go on the LED side, it's time for the final phase here. You know, one thing I like to do and I like to keep in mind whenever I'm doing a mod, especially something uh, like a controller mod, a controller port LED mod, is if there's any maintenance that you can do to the controller board now or the motherboard or whatever you're working on, now is the time to do it. Specifically as it relates to the GameCube, there is a clock battery on the daughter board. So we're going to go ahead and remove that now and get a new one taken care of. Same principles apply. I'm just using some soldering wick to go ahead and remove that and plenty of flux. So with the controller board now all propped up by my third hand, I'm going to glue in each of the LEDs to the tabs that we removed earlier from the controller ports. The key here is to make sure and do your absolute best to make sure that the angle at which the LEDs are pointing at is exactly the same or as close to the same on each of the controller ports. The trick there is, to, is if you don't do that, the LEDs and the dispersion of light from those LEDs is going to look uneven and different in each controller port and honestly it does not look great. If you find that you made a mistake, you can just use some IPA and it will disengage the hot glue and it makes it very easy to remove. I wouldn't recommend pulling on any of the cables or prying on the LEDs, just add a little bit of IPA and they pop right up. But like I said, taking a little bit of extra time goes a long way to making sure that you've done a nice job and you're going to be very happy with the result. Okay, now that I got those LEDs all placed and glued in, I'm just going to go and replace the CR2032 clock battery that I had removed previously with a brand new one. Pretty simple. Get it all lined up and solder it into place. Finally, I'm going to install the power LED, and you can kind of see how I'm doing this. I'm just lining up a little bit of glue along the top of the controller board, and that'll make it easy to glue down the wire and effectively hold the LED in place since there's a gap in where it actually needs to go. So what you're taking a look at here is the pinout of the GameCube daughter board for the controller ports. And specifically we need to take note of where 5 volts and ground are because that's what we're going to end up soldering the LED controller to. board all soldered in, the last thing I'm going to do is go ahead and glue it into the back of the daughter board. The thing to take note of here is you want to make sure you don't get it in the way of any of the screw ports, which you're kind of seeing to the right and to the left of the actual board, as well as those big round pads that you're seeing along the bottom. One other thing that I did off camera is I put some electrical tape on the back of the LED uh, controller board. This makes sure I don't get a short between the LED controller board and the GameCube controller daughter board. But with that, we've done all the hard work. Last thing we're going to do is just button this thing up, put the screws back in, go ahead and plug in the LEDs to the actual LED controller, and then time to give this thing a test. So I did test everything prior to reassembly, but uh, just to give you guys kind of enough flavor for what you can do here, you have all kinds of different settings. You can do solid colors. You can do different flash patterns. I mean, there's really just a ton of different options with these individually addressable RGB LEDs. And honestly, the result is totally fantastic and worth the extra cost to use the individually addressable RGB LEDs. I want to thank you guys very much for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, 
please give me a comment, a like, and a subscribe. And let me know, what do you guys think about these RGB LEDs? Worth the extra effort? Let me know in the comments below. Have a good one guys, later.